Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I want to start my playthrough of Neverland's Legacy, the legend of Peter Pan and his allies. Like many other games by Thomas M. Gofton, Neverland's Legacy is a very thematic cooperative game. The twist in this game is that you can also play as the pirates in this game. So all of the characters come basically two-sided. So this would be the side if you would opt to play as the pirate and the back side is basically the enemy when playing as Peter Pan and his lost allies. In this playthrough I decided to play as Peter Pan and Tinkerbell in this case. There are additional characters, let us show them to you. So here we have Tiger Lily and we have also Bendy Darling of course. But yeah, in this case it's Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. They all come with special abilities. I come to that in a second. And the goal in a two-player game is to first find and then rescue two orphans. In this case that's Michael and John. So basically the brothers of Wendy and in order to find them you have to fly from Neverland onto the Jolly Roger and yeah basically search through those search tokens here so basically as yes, one of your actions but of course see for yourself there are already a lot of pirates that are spawned as part of setup and in order to rescue the orphans again I have to first find them on the Jolly Roger, then I have to bring them to the upper deck basically and then I have to fly back to Neverland. In a two-player game again those are those two guys they are somewhere in this search deck here which is assembled in a very let's say specific manner. The rules describe you how to do that. So the first four cards are definitely not any orphans that's for sure but once I found both or my second orphan in this case, Captain James Hook will appear in his captain quarters and then I also have to defeat him in order to win this game. There are multiple ways in this game to lose it. So first of all the search deck can run out, then in this case the game is immediately over. One of the hostages is being killed, so first orphan down, we are losing the game. All the characters have fallen. Fallen doesn't really mean out of the game, they're basically yeah, delayed and another character may still be able to rescue them but nevertheless if both characters are fallen then yeah we would also lose the game or if a third named enemy would be placed then this would also mean game over. I already mentioned it but as part of setup I have already spawned some yeah, pirate tokens here they are all coming from those threat cards. I was kind of unlucky because we basically I think I had three cards that showed those brutes and brutes are particularly tough to kill because they need two hits in order to be removed so yeah this was really kind of unfortunate but at least I may be okay or maybe relatively sure I won't see that many additional brutes coming in anytime soon and as part of setup I also spawned a lot of those search tokens here like here in the hold so this is basically where I should do a search action and then I will be able to take a search card and sooner or later I should be able to find one of those orphans but of course I need both in order to win this game by the way the backside of those cards are basically being used when playing as the pirate. So then you really see parts of the Neverland yeah, Island in this case. So this is really something that works really cool and I like this a lot to be honest. But of course not destroy our setup here. And last but not least let's have a look at our special abilities. Peter Pan when you fight deal one wound to two different enemies. That's pretty useful. We'll definitely use it quite a lot. And Tinkerbell's special ability is particularly useful. She may dis rescue your hostage in your location by spending a destiny token instead of discarding fairy dust. And normally you have to go through the search deck in order to find an item called fairy dust. But in this case she can spend her destiny token in order to fly away with the orphan. That's really definitely important important and yeah I think that's pretty much it. Let's start the game and I will explain all the rules as I go. If Peter Pan is participating in a playthrough you have to start with him but I'm not really sure if it does matter but I will stick to the rules and the first thing that you would have to do would be to do a morale check but right now we don't have any despair tokens whatsoever so we don't have to roll those dice here. Oh, stones of chance. 
then we would get four actions and then we would go into the thread step. I have to mention that I've never played this game before, so it's really a learning exercise for me. The rules seem to be pretty straightforward from reading those, but you know me, I will do a lot of mistakes, that's for sure. I will, as usual, try to repair them as good as I can. And what's more important, I will definitely do some very stupid decisions in respect to gameplay, so bear with me here. Okay. Let's see what actions we will be allowed to do. As we don't have any dispatch tokens on us, we can basically choose all of our actions. So we can move, we can fight, we can search, we can taunt, we can use basically courage, which removes the dispatch token, or we can rest. Right now, we don't have any dispatch tokens, we don't have any wounds, so I think it will be more or less one of those first four actions here. As I need to protect those search tokens sooner or later, but keep in mind, again, the first four are definitely not orphans, but they may still be fairy dust and also need fairy dust in order to rescue those orphans. So I think it should be a good idea to move here to the upper ship or upper deck of the Jolly Rogers and yeah, start fighting some of those brutes. So I think with my very first action, I will move to the galley here or to the deck and as I've already mentioned those brutes are particularly tough to kill so you can only defeat them when they are being dealt two wounds in the same turn doesn't have to be in the same action no in the same turn good thing is that Peter's special ability allows him to deal one wound to two different enemies when doing a fighting action so I think let's do that now so with my second action I will fight and yeah basically I will fight in my location so both of those brutes get one wound each then I will do a second fight action so with my third action this would give them two wounds so we can remove those brutes and now I still have one more action left and there is one let's say very important rule if you ever move into a space that contains enemies you cannot move again this turn even though if i would have i have removed all of those brutes right now i'm still not allowed to move out of that space so in this case i think i will just do a search action so i will remove this search token and i will draw my very first search card and in this case i'm relatively lucky it's a pirate coin when drawing by a character gain one coin and those are really those nice metal coins really like those a lot during your turn discard a coin to perform a free taunt that's already a good thing something bad may happen if an enemy would have found this coin but i can also use those coins on neverland you may search it to exchange two coins for any item cards in the search discard pile. so this really gives me the chance to basically yeah find fairy dust that has been discarded before of course if orphans have been found and killed yeah i cannot find them here and yeah i would also already have lost the game at that point in time i think those were all of the actions for peter so let's move into the threat step so let's draw the threat card and resolve it and here we have the yellow threads. So first of all, we would activate all yellow, let's say, enemies on board. So let's start with the sniper here at the upper deck. Their special ability or their, let's say, priority says that they will deal one wound to the nearest deck character on their deck. Unfortunately, Peter Pan is on the same deck, so he will deal one wound to Peter here and whenever you take a wound you also get one despair token so yeah he's already pretty beaten but we are not done yet as we still have a second sniper here at the gun deck there are no characters on the same deck there is no hostage in his location so we would go into the next highest priority and this says in their location deal wound to a character again there aren't any characters again there aren't any hostages but we would remove a search token and draw the appropriate card. So this is really a bummer. So let's remove one of those search tokens here. Let's draw a search card. And here we have snipers. When drawn, discover a sniper in the location of the search token, but they are not being activated right away. So here we are kind of lucky, it seems. So let's place an additional sniper. But yeah, this is also a way to get new enemies on board. 
Last thing to do would be to resolve the discovery effect of the yellow threat card. So we will see another pirate token at the stern. We will see another pirate token in the crew quarters and we will also see an additional search token. And this is really kind of a problem because this search token is all the way in the basically belly of the ship in the crew quarter. So we really have to do some movement in order to get there. And on top of this, we have to spawn an additional sniper here at the stern. But this was pretty much the turn of Peter Pan. And next it would be Tinkerbell. I think we really have to do some movement basically to the belly of the ship. So first of all, I will move Tinkerbell here to the foredeck. All of those locations come with special abilities like the foredeck here, lost ally steal plus one wound when fighting. This special ability triggers if you are in the or if you have the majority in a location. So if there would be one pirate here and basically two lost allies, we would have the majority. So we would be able to leverage the special ability. We have the majority, but unfortunately we cannot really use this special ability at this point in time. Really a bummer. Okay, this was her first action and I think then she will move down the stairs here to the galley. So let's grab her and send her down here to the galley. She has still two more actions left and yeah, unfortunately we have no majority here. We would could heal a wound if you would end your turn here. So we will, with our third action, we will basically um, yeah, wound this brute here. Then we will do our fourth action. So this would defeat this brute. This was a good thing, but we are out of action. So we cannot do a search action. In theory, you can always use your destiny token to get an additional action. But I think at this, this point in time of the game, this is nothing I want to do. So let's move into the threat step of Tinkerbell. And here we have the red threat card, but it comes with an event. A wave hits the ship. In each location with stairs, all characters and enemies are moved up the stairs to the ship deck above if possible. And I think that's actually a very, very good thing. Or maybe not quite sure. So we will start here with the brood. This he will go to the galley. That's for sure. Let's place him here so we don't forget. This sniper will move to the captain's cabin. Here there aren't any stairs, so we can basically leave them where they are. Tinkerbell also has to move up to the foredeck. Yeah, that's the location. So she will land back there. Oof, not really sure if I like this. And this was pretty much the event part of that threat part. But of course, we would still have to yeah, activate all red tokens. Right now, there aren't any red tokens. So we can basically skip that. Though in this case, we can directly discover. So we will see one raider here at the mid deck. So basically here and one raider here at the captain's cabin and he will also basically bring another search token. Okay, that was already the very first round and I think I will do one more in this playthrough or in this episode of my playthrough. And again, we will start with Peter Pan. Right now he has one dispatch token. So this means he has to roll this stone of chance. And this is now a forced action. So he has to use it even though it doesn't make sense. Of course, he has to be able to do that. He can choose when he will do that. But yeah, it's definitely not a free action. So let's see what he gets. So in this case, that's a fight action, so basically a forced fight action. That's really not a bad thing because this is definitely something we want to do anyway. And yeah, we are kind of unfortunate. This is a brute. This is really bad luck, to be honest. So we will move him down here with this first free action or chosen, chosen action basically. Then he will do a fight action there. He will just use his forced action. So basically the die wounding this brute. We will need a second wound in order to hit him. So third action will defeat this brute. And I think with the fourth action, we will just do a search action because we cannot move anyway. And here we found an apple. Discard this card during any character's turn to remove one wound from your character. So I think why not? Let's do it right away. Let's heal this wound. Unfortunately, we will not lose the dispatch token automatically. And then we have to draw our next threat card. And I think I was a bit too quick when announcing that we won't 
be seeing any additional <laughs> blue tokens because this is apparently a blue thread. So first of all, we would hack activate the blue threads in this case this brute will simply move to the foredeck but it will not activate again in this case and the second brute will basically go for this search token here that's really unfortunate so let's see what we get brutes when drawn discover a brute in the location of the search token are you kidding me okay but overall that wasn't that bad to be honest and yeah, this was, no, it was not it. Of course, we still have to discover. And it seems all of the actions will take place in the mid deck here. So we will see one additional search token in the galley. That's definitely a good thing. And yeah, we will see another search token back there in the captain's cabin. But of course, we will see another brood there. So I really see that this game can be pretty tough, to be honest. Wow, okay. Let's move one there. Let's place an additional brood and poo. <laughs> wow, I really don't know. Okay, but we still have Tinkerbell. She doesn't have any despair tokens, so she can directly choose her actions. And poor, this is tough. In theory, I could basically try to get this one here. Maybe this is what I should do. So maybe I should really do twice the fighting against this brood. Move there and fight the sniper maybe this is what we should do in order to protect because if we move down then this token will be lost for sure and there's nothing i can do about those tokens at this point in time at least so yeah i think this is what we will do so we will fight once and twice so we will defeat this brood then we would move here with our third action with our fourth action i will take out this sniper and yeah unfortunately i'm out of action so i will not be able to get this search token here okay this was already her turn so let's draw her threat card and again we would see a red thread so in this case we start with the raider here at the mid deck and yeah his next priority would say move to an adjacent location with a priority listed under two and the two priority wants to deal a wound to a character there is no character adjacent that's really a bummer then we would go for kill a hostage Luckily, there is also not a hostage adjacent, but there is a surge token adjacent. So in this case, the raider will not move to the foredeck. No, he will move down to the captain's cabin down there. Poof, not sure if I like this. We still have an additional raider here at the captain's cabin, so he will activate. He will remove one surge token. And yeah, let's see what we got. And wow, okay, I think we already lost this game because we just found John Darling. When drawn, place John Darling in the location of the search token. Get him to safety. You must be kidding me. Wow, we have four pirates in that location. Luckily, the activations are done, but still I have to get somewhere there in order to protect him because otherwise and here it really doesn't matter which card we draw so all of the characters are present they will definitely kill john in this case wow okay i have to check what i will be able to do but there is a slight chance that peter may be able to get there so from the galley he could move here to the foredeck to the captain's cabin and uh, to the mid deck and then to the captain's cabin so okay there is definitely a slight chance for us wow it's really getting pretty rough already but yeah definitely i like this a lot but no, there is one thing I nearly forgot. Of course, we still have to discover. And guess what? A raider is appearing at the foredeck. And there is another one down there in the crew quarters. So let's do the easy one first. So let's place one token there. Let's place a search token there. But unfortunately, we have to place an additional raider there. Wow. I really hate this, to be honest. Bah, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I have no clue. I think we just lost this game. And what I really hate about this game <laughs> 
is that you're not able to choose your starting player because this way we would have been able to rescue John. Because if I would have started with Tinkerbell, I could have flown over to Neverland, back to the mid deck, then down to the ca captain's cabin and still do a fight action there. But yeah, unfortunately I have to start with a starting player being Peter Pan here. So, and he still suffers under a slight level of despair. So let's roll his stone of chance. Okay, this is a search action. We would have to do basically the one of our forced actions is a search action. And yeah, I don't know what to do with that, to be honest. Of course I can search, but this was not my plan as I had to move to the captain's cabin here. And right now I don't know how to get there. And I think there is no way I can get there. Okay, there is still a slight chance. I nearly forgot one of his actions. That's a taunt action. So I will do my first force search action here. So I will remove the search token because this is something I have to do anyway. So let's draw our search card. And wow, Pirate Lou went drawn by a card gained two coins. Hmm. Okay, that's definitely something. So I will grab those. And yeah, this was my first action. With my second action, I will taunt. So in this case, I will move the raider down to me. As I've not moved into a location of another, let's say, pirate, I can still move on when I move. With my third action, I will move to the foredeck now. With my fourth action, I will move to the mid deck. And now I have to spend my destiny token in order to get a fifth action. And this fifth action will uh, move me to the captain's cabin. Now I'm the first, let's call it hunting priority. Let's stick to the um, theme here from Merchants and Marauders. So they will all go after Peter Pan, which is at this point in time perfectly fine for me. So I think this was definitely, yeah, gives us a little breather. So let's draw our thread card. And here we see the yellow thread. Wow, we have a lot of yellow tokens, that's for sure. So let's see. This one is pretty simple. He will snipe all the way to Tinkerbell. So she basically takes a wound and one despair token. And there is one thing I just noticed, and I hope you are fine for me taking this back because I can spend those coins in order to do a free taunt action. So I wouldn't have to spend my destiny token in order to taunt the raider down to me. So in this case, I will basically spend my coin here. I really hope that's fine for you. I'm learning this game, so I'm fine with that because no harm was done. But of course, we still have to continue activating those snipers. They will basically all hit Peter Pan here on the same deck. So I'm kind of lucky that I ate the apple, to be honest. But this gives him one, two, three more wounds. And of course, this will also give him one, two, three more despair tokens. So he has to roll four of those stones of chance. And yeah, for his morale check, I think there is really not much choice that he will have. We still have to spawn new pirates and search tokens. So let's do that. So let's see, one sniper goes here, one search token, and we will see an additional search token down here in the hold. Okay, this was the turn of Peter Pan, <laughs> and wow, I'm, I really start feeling the despair, that's for sure. Then we will roll the die for Tinkerbell, because she also has one despair token. So let's see. Her force action is a move action. Okay, that's not particularly bad, to be honest. We want to move anyway, or we have to move anyway. And I think we have to help Peter. There is nothing we can do about it. That's for sure. Okay, this will be her first action, basically her forced action. Then her second action will move her here. And for her third action, she will also enter the captain's cabin. She still has one more action and I think we will defeat one of those raiders. We cannot search. 
while there are pirates here. And yeah, this was already her turn, to be honest. She could also spend her Destiny token right now in order to take out one of those guys, but I think right now I'd rather not. So yeah, let's draw her threat card. And again, we will see blue threat being activated. So let's do that. This one is pretty obvious. He will attack Tinkerbell. So she takes one wound and oops, one additional dispatch token for that. One of those brutes, let's say this guy will search here. So let's see what we get. Glass eye junk, discard this card. Whew. Okay, finally we are getting lucky or <laughs> starting to get lucky. This guy basically doesn't have someone in his location. His next big thing would be to move here to the captain's crew. Well, we have a party here. And next he would have to spawn a new blue tokens. And according to the threat card, we will see one brute here and one additional search token here. Okay, that's pretty much the end of her turn as well. They are both incredibly shaken. So he has basically three wounds, four despair tokens, Tinkerbell has two and two. So wow. Okay, let's see what the next turn will bring. But I think I will end my video for today. So we see a hell of a lot of pirates here in this middle section of the ship. Not sure if this is really that big of a deal, to be honest, because once we have cleaned those guys out we will be able to move them up without any major problems to be honest or John up so I think there is still a good chance that we will be able to make it at least rescuing maybe at least one of those orphans and then we may have find some air to to heal and rest and whatnot so this is at least my hope I have for the next episode I really hope you are enjoying my little playthrough of Neverland's Legacy. For me, this really seems to be a tough little game, to be honest. I think I already noticed some strategic mistakes I've been doing. I think I really should use the taunt action more aggressively because otherwise I'm really stuck at some of the locations. And I think this is really something was a major mistake from my side. But as I mentioned, I'm learning this game with you. So yeah, let's see how things turn out. Hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, until then, bye bye. <laughs>